A scene not unlike this, some more violent, some more sudden, plays out somewhere around the world every minute of every day. Internationally, almost 1,800 people per day or nearly 700,000 people per year outside of a car are killed by traffic-related violence. People are bad at driving cars, there's no doubt about that, and cars weighing in at two or more tons growing in size every year with poor sight lines and excessive power certainly doesn't help, but those are the instruments of death, not the root cause. So what's to blame for all this? While there are a number of factors that result in growing numbers of casualties from the car, the one thing most clearly responsible than others is speed. In the United States, 2020 was one of the deadliest years on record for pedestrians. In that year, 6,721 pedestrians were killed. This is an increase of 4.8% from the previous year. While it may seem like a modest increase, recall that 2020 was the start of the COVID pandemic. People stayed home like they never had before, and as a result, vehicle miles traveled, or VMT, in 2020 decreased more than 13%. The combined effect of fewer miles traveled and a greater number of pedestrian deaths means that the real growth in pedestrian fatalities as measured in deaths per billion miles traveled increased from 1.9 to 2.3, or a jump of 21%. Fewer cars on the road in 2020 led to a dramatic decrease in traffic congestion. With less congestion, drivers significantly increase their speeds in reckless driving. This easily happens because so many of our roads have been designed to facilitate mobility and speed over accessibility and safety. One example of the built-in tolerance of speed our roads have is the slip lane. A slip lane allows drivers to bypass an intersection by using a special lane to make their turn before they have to slow down for a traffic signal. These quick turns allow traffic to keep moving, but they also endanger the lives of everyone outside the car. The lanes rarely have pedestrian signals or signage that requires a driver to stop or yield to pedestrians. These lanes are low visibility for both driver and pedestrian. This locks those on foot in a deadly race against the next quickly turning car. Roads in general are designed to favor the speeding driver. In many places, speeds are determined using the 85th percentile rule. This means rather than designing a road that encourages a safe speed from the onset and then establishing speed based on rules such as the minimization of the probability of a crash or maximization of visibility, open road speeds are often set by the speed at which 85% of the drivers are observed to travel at or slower. We put a lot of trust in the average driver to use responsible speeds when traveling down an open road in favorable conditions. Maybe drivers deserve this trust under perfect circumstances, but add a bit of rain, a cranky child, a ringing phone, or just a bad day, and suddenly perfect and safe conditions are out the window. Just as it's not a great idea to let the fox guard the hen house, it's not a great idea to let drivers set the speed limit. So what's the solution? Easy. Slow down the cars. Slowing down traffic increases driver reaction time to avoid a crash and evens out the traffic flow to reduce sudden stops and queuing. But slowing down cars can make cities safer for humans outside the car too. Small increments of change in speed have a massive impact on the outcome for a person hit by someone driving a car. At 25 miles per hour, 9 in 10 average age pedestrians will survive a collision with a car. With a modest increase of 35 miles per hour, the probability of surviving drops to 7 in 10. Add another 10 miles per hour and the odds of surviving drop to 4 out of 10. Anything at or above 55 miles per hour means near certain death for a pedestrian or cyclist and yeah, the outcome for the driver isn't that great either. If we are to try and reduce the disturbing trend towards growing traffic fatalities, we should first look at how roads are designed. Shifting away from a focus on speed to roads designed for safety would mean we wouldn't have to see scenes like this playing out quite literally every minute of every day. <laughs>